welcome everybody back to uh, Siegel Talks here from the Martini Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center CUNY in New York City, which is um, a ghost town. Uh, everything is closed. All theaters are closed, bars, restaurants, shops, um, ambulances on the street. We are in the epicenter in a way of, of most of the world also. And, um, and uh, the situation is unprecedented. Uh, um, around the world, mosques in Egypt have closed for the first time in a thousand years. And it's one of the great interruptions in the life of societies uh, in the history of the world, I think. Very unique, unprecedented. And um, so we are asking, uh, of course, you know, what does this mean uh, to all of us? And uh, um, what does it mean for theater and performance? And we hear so much from politicians, from virologists and economists, but I feel it's a time and we feel it's time to really also hear from the artists and listen to them. And one of the few things we can do is to listen and. Uh, of course, perhaps also use the time to think. And I know that you all are thinkers. All our participants have been thinkers. So um, Brecht famously said that new times need new forms of theater. And what are those new forms? And uh, what has been new perhaps is no longer new. And if we uh, don't criticize them, don't change them, as Heiner Müller said, then it's treason if we just go on with that's already has been done. So what do we do? We are in the middle of it. And um, the place will come later, the Netflix series about the time, but it is a time to think. And so uh, we had fantastic, uh, significant artists with that. We started off with Taylor Mack and Kristen Martin from the Here Art Center. Taylor started TrickleUpNYC.org, an organization, a little bit like Netflix, everybody pays $10. And you get the work of 50 brilliant New York City artists and many more who create online content and the money actually goes to them. Artists are commissioned. Um, we heard from um, China and from uh, Hong Kong, uh, places where when the <clears throat> uh, coronavirus might be all over still, uh, theater artists are facing great, great challenges. Um, Thomas Ostermeyer joined us from the Schöneberg apartment in Berlin where he talked about that we should stay sober and not read meaning into it. Uh, that is not really there. He says the world is chaotic. Uh, there is no sense to this. It's just something we have to go through. And he said, let's prepare. Let's prepare well for the fights ahead of us, have we really been prepared for that post hyper capitalist world we all live in? And have we really uh, done a good job as artists? Uh, he has, a lot of us have done, but we can and have to rethink what we are doing. Um, we had um, Toshiki Okada uh, uh, with us uh, who talked from Japan. He's writing a ghost play about uh, no theater inspired by it. And uh, so he called us in the middle of the night, as you guys call us, it's midnight in, uh, in, uh, in Korea now. And um, we had, we heard from Egypt and the Lebanon, very touching, incredible stories of uh, how theater in a country where it's already almost impossible to do theater, which is now what it means to, to go on and, and, and think about it. And um, so now I have uh, with us uh, three representatives from uh, Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan is a, one of the great nations where culture also is and always has been um, at the center. And um, we have with us uh, Tung Yen, who is a multidisciplinary artist with work in performance installation and music video. And he of created an uh, international also platform, a digital platform. Um, with us also as Wu Kang, who's a choreographer and a performer and they will tell a bit about his company and also Kathy, who is the chairperson of the Performing Arts Network Development Association. So they all will give us a little um, insight. Uh, Marco uh, and Armana from the Teatro de la Alben Ravenna said it's a time for them. They live like monks. They uh, get up at 12 noon, study eight hours, and read and write and then watch movies and uh, feel it's like the earth in a farm is lying. Uh, vacant, it's freezing, and, but of course everybody misses uh, terribly um, what we are doing. Yesterday, uh, also colleagues from Italy uh, did say Max Gaziano and uh, Valeria and uh, Lucia, the playwright, said, you know, the time is, is this a real change? All of a sudden people are ahead of the economy, they're ahead of the production, always so we can't stop. This is more important, our economy, but everybody now is stopping and perhaps this will be a rethinking, we don't know yet. Only when we look back in 50 years from now, we will exactly know what it meant. But of the day off, like today, we really don't know. It's chaotic. We don't know how long it's going to last, but we will know. We do know there will be a vaccine. It might be a year, year and a half. It will come to an end. And then perhaps the world has changed. And theater that always creates meaning 
that tells us where we come from, where we are, where we are going to. And as the Sanskrit said, also has to entertain the drunk. Uh, so this is what makes us uh, different uh, that we all do that. <laughs> we would like to hear from um, from um, um, uh, Taiwan. And so I start with Wu Kang. Uh, yes. So tell us a bit um, um, what's going on on the streets uh, in Seoul. In, not in Seoul, in, in Taiwan. <laughs> In Taiwan, uh, yes. We, and, uh, sorry, in Taiwan, of course. Yeah, yes. it's okay. Uh, I just actually finished a, a performance uh, this evening, and it was an uh, improvisational performance. And audience are packed, even though we reduced the number of audience, and we only have 50 in the house, and we kept them very far away from each other, a meter away. It was under government's regulation. They suggest a meter away indoor. Uh, with mask and everybody just show their love and then they cherish the moment because it's not easy to see performers these days. So the performer, they, even though it's improvisational, but you can feel their hunger mm. to perform and like there's no tomorrow. And I asked them what other shows that has been canceled and they just, they keep numbering, oh, this show, this show, this show, and they don't know if the future project is going to continue or that's it. So everybody cherish the opportunity that can stay together and enjoy a performance. That so was- in Taipei, so, in Taipei, yeah. in the capital, shows are going on? Uh, private run, small scale, under so 50. Under 50 and with social distancing and- uh, Yes. And, so uh, we, we can still do that. Uh, because our government really was very cautious in the beginning, like in December, we start noticing people start to warning each other. There was uh, the virus still start to show. And because in January, I went to Bangkok and that was when Bangkok started to have the first case. Mm -hmm. And we heard the news and my friends start telling me, oh, you better be careful, wear a mask, blah, blah, blah. And then things got really serious. And our mm -hmm. government prepared, very well prepared, I think. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, and the, Yu Chen Liu, who helped also to put this together, she gave me the dates. Says, you only have 376 cases and five deaths mm -hmm. in Taiwan. How is that possible? What did you guys do differently? Uh, <laughs> Maybe Kathy, you can yeah. answer. <laughs> okay. Um, as of today, we have a total of 379 cases. So there was mm -hmm. an increase of uh, three more, which is actually uh, miraculously very low um, mm -hmm. compared to everywhere else in the world. And like you said, five deaths. Um, like Wukan just said, um, the government actually sent out um, a, a uh, a bunch of um, health um, professionals to China um, in late December. So actually, mm -hmm. the f and they started to notice that this might spread out, might have an outbreak. So the first confirmed case was actually in, um, I believe it was 20th of January. And, but before that, uh, the government has been um, issuing warnings already. So actually the society is aware. And because we, we've experienced something very similar um, 11 years ago, I believe, mm -hmm. the SARS. Um, yeah. Or 13 years ago. I believe it was 13, 2003. Um, so I think the public is very aware of um, pandemics like this. And so the public, the society actually um, are very cooperative with the government's um, procedures or measures um, that are drawn out. And uh, we, I believe we were the first, the government actually um, stopped any flights from Wuhan. That was the first thing. And then from major cities in China, because it was during the Chinese New Year's where all um, traveling um, was, was tremendous traffic for Chinese New Year's and the um, amount of people who work in China all come back to Taiwan during that, um, the most important holidays. And so with flights canceled, um, no one from China and then travel groups were canceled um, to Hong Kong and to, to, to China as well. 
but also then face masks were um, rationed. Um, so there, there can't be panic buying or stocking. So, and with that, I think the public with more trust um, and with all these measures, it's helped to sort of um, bring down the, uh, the speed of the outbreak, mm -hmm. but also the, I believe the public, the society, the people, um, the precautions people take really, people took, really, yeah, um, yeah contributed to, to this a lot. And after the, after the SARS, <clears throat> it had, um, after the SARS virus, I think uh, it was taken very, very serious and uh, yes. prepared. Yes. Um, so uh, Wu Kang was a choreographer and um, uh, um, how, how is the um, how is the, the mood between artists? Uh, is that uh, is impacting the work now? Or is everybody still rehearsing? And uh, what 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 is on people's minds at the moment? Is it being taken as serious as perhaps as it is here or in Italy and others? Or um, do you feel you um, can still operate? Uh, I think all the artists are stimulate by the situation by what's happening in the world and by how we are we can still doing what we're doing so we can still in a way rehearsing even though mm -hmm. there's no performance but they can generate idea and also the government have support coming in to a certain area that if you come up with something they, they can support you to, to, to do it in in different way. So artists are trying to get together and trying to find a form to do it. Mm -hmm. Like and, I do also. Mm -hmm. Like Tung Yen, um, your work already a lot has been based, I think, on, on, on the multidisciplinary work, on, on the digital. I think your piece, Virtual Intimacy, went to Australia, but it deals with the relations. Um, um, between um, the new technology and uh, audiences and between people and each other. Um, for you, um, is this, uh, this corona crisis, is it something where you say, yes, this is actually something where I now can uh, deepen my work? I, have you thought that this might one day uh, be a reason that your work would become uh, more at the forefront of what could be even seen around the world right now at the moment? Um, we can't hear you. I, is your your sound is not on? Yes, no. I am yeah. on now. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think this situation has definitely affect um, in every aspect of our life, and especially as a artist, I I have a few. I have a two international collaboration that is going on, and luckily I managed to uh, present the work in Melbourne uh, right before all the theater in Melbourne and Australia closed down. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I managed to fly back and did uh, 14 days of uh, quarantine myself and also got back to uh, my daily life. Uh, I think from now on, we will actually see our work and the world, the world in a very um, different point of view. Like what is theater when people have to be at home and how do we, uh, and I, what I feel is how much we want to be connected, how, one, how much we want it to be, want to be together. Like a lot of people maybe before this will, 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 will say they will be happy to stay at home for a week or even longer, they are otaku. And, but now you just desperately want, feeling like you wanting to um, be connected to someone, you want to sit beside someone. And that's uh, what I already find very amazing. And I started to see things with this future, this understanding of what if this is not possible? What, whatever like already we years ago, you started thinking about how, what could a theater be if you don't sit in a room together? No, no, because I think uh, during the SARS uh, era, it wasn't this serious. It wasn't mm -hmm. the global situation. So, and also theater weren't closed down. So uh, maybe there was show canceled, but it's not so long and so uh, such a pandemic around the globe. And, uh, but I, I mean, for now, for, for example, my uh, collaboration with the Netherlands group, which 
is supposed to perform in Northern Song Festival this August. And we, we are still uncertain whether it, if it can happen. And we are kind of think that, no, it's not gonna be able to work. But in the installation, we had like 99 uh, screens uh, installed in the space. So they are like uh, blinking and then communicating to each other. They are li little flashing screen. Originally, they are supposed to be uh, communicating devices. But now that I look at it or think about it, I immediately feel that they are virus. They can be virus. They can be, uh, they, they, there can be another meaning of it. So it's uh, been already, um, yeah. Yeah, especially when, when, when so many shows are canceled, you, you, you start to wonder, um, while we are researching for the dream-like or for many uh, existential extension question uh, in our work, all these philosophical things we have been exploring for years, but we are now facing so like philosophical question. The, the, the reality, the world is probably more extreme than our theater, than mm -hmm. what are we doing, then that all these kind of things start to happen, yeah. Mm -hmm. What are the ethical or moral questions you are exploring at the moment? Uh, you just at mentioned the moment, mm -hmm. uh, At the moment, I'm more uh, thinking about it. I'm not dealing with it. I'm not really uh, producing anything. But uh, mm -hmm. to, to make one uh, example will be like, I have a show that collaborate, to collaborate with a Danish institution that was going to uh, perform in the Taichung National Opera House uh, next week, but it got canceled. However, the, uh, the Ministry of Culture and the, the Performing Arts Center has been very supportive. They say we can still use the space to uh, do try out, make experiments, and they can still support uh, the basic uh, funding for that. So I took the chance. So actually I have been quite productive uh, doing a um, new setting and then preparing to go into the theater for a week, which I also doubt my, like to, I also question myself, like, should I actually do it? Should I actually let everybody stay at home? But initial, initially I was like, if everybody can still come to theater and work, people will feel better, people will get paid and I should do it and I, I, I would love to have an empty, great theater to, to, to spend a week. Yeah, so um, that's the personal ethical question that I'm dealing with, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, um, uh, Wu Kang, um, yes. do you, uh, I, are you in quarantine at all then, you guys? Are you, Wu Kang and also um, Dong Yen, are you going oh, out like everyday life or yes, I go what out. is happening? Mm -hmm. I go out every day and uh, my parents live far away from me. They live in the south. So in order to have them with me, I have to drive to Kaohsiung to pick them up because I don't want them to spend their time <laughs> in public transportation. So I went down and pick, pick them up and slowly, it's a five hours drive, it's not far, but we can do camping in the middle. So the <laughs> lifestyle has changed. We, so we, you we meet get... in the middle, both of you with the car two and a half hours away and you do camping? No, no, no. I, I went down, all the way down. And all the way down. Them, uh, and mm -hmm. on, 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 the, on the way back to Taipei, we yeah. camp in the middle. So you have a <laughs> tent, you have a tent, and yeah. you do grilling, and they sleep in a tent, you have a tent. Yeah. And so we like in the old it. days, yeah. Yeah, it's really in the old days. Like, uh, reminds me of my childhood how my father did do camping with me. Yeah. So it was very interesting time for us. We, we just very lucky that we can still do things yeah. and try, but yeah. stay away from people, mm. like a large group yeah. of people. And Tung Yang, yeah. what, what, how does your day look like? Is it any different than it was before or um, is it? Um, uh, what are the, the day I the, the day I got back from Melbourne, I actually didn't need to stay at home for 14 days, but uh, I thought, the, but like 24 hours later or 20 hours later, those flights that came after that day will always need to stay at home for 14 days. But I thought I would be extra careful. So I stay at home for like 12 days. 
I actually wanted to go to a dentist, but they they wouldn't allow me. Like I I couldn't do it. So um, a lot of painkiller, uh, stay at home. But then mm -hmm. after I walk on the street during these few days for for a week already, I felt that people are a lot more relaxed than I thought. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I, I I start to be a bit scared. I feel okay. It can be very serious if if we are this relaxed now. Because in the February, we are extra cautious. Like mm. everyone is uh, just buying masks and buying all the um, alcohol uh, uh, sanitizer and anything. Mm. But now, you know, all the coffee shops are quite packed. So I, I, I'm actually <laughs> a bit worried. And we just have a four days holiday and everybody sort of went out after such a long time, stay, stay, staying home. Right. Um, so... Yeah. It's just, just incredible how different uh, the situations are in the world. Maybe Kathy, um, <laughs> um, tell us a bit. Um, uh, even so, uh, it looks like there's so, so incredibly low number of cases, 380 mm. cases and five deaths, mm. which almost sounds like normal numbers of a seasonal uh, flu or influenza. Um, but still, your government, uh, is it prepared as it was prepared for the virus? Is it prepared to help artists, the performing art scenes? Mm -hmm. um, what 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 are what are the uh, um, initiatives? Right. Okay. Um, I think the cultural the cultural ministry um, is very responsive, and um, actually started talking about a relief package um, mid February, um, and it was rolled out um, early March. So we're actually in the process of the first phase of applications for the relief fund, which um, I believe um, the first one, which we call the 1.0 relief fund is about, um, I think it's about uh, 48 million mm -hmm. US. So it's for um, individuals, freelancers, as well as um, theater companies. Um, so it ends this, this week, this Friday, I believe it will go out very soon um, because already the 2.0 relief fund has been approved. And that adds another, uh, I believe 120 million for the arts and culture. So that means a total of uh, 168 million US um, for this stage, for this year. We're not really sure. Um, what happens after the 2.0, but um, at this stage, we're just very grateful. And the process, like in Berlin, it's super easy, maybe not as easy as Berlin, but compared to what we had to deal with in the past, this is super easy. You basically file um, for either for individuals for um, a, a, like, um, a work fee. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you get it. It's pretty mm -hmm. easy. So we're looking forward to seeing um, how that plays out. Um, and like you said, like we touched on earlier, the theaters are not closed um, fully, um, but definitely the bigger public theaters, the three major um, national theaters um, in Taiwan are actually working together to bring different initiatives to help the artists and the art groups, which I believe will be rolling out very soon. So there, that coupled with the relief fund for the arts, I believe that would be uh, further um, helpful for the sector, mm -hmm. um, at least to bring shows either for live streaming or um, for like Dong Yen is using the theaters. Um, the funds are still going to the artists definitely. Maybe not in full, but they're trying. Yeah, that is extraordinary. Um, under uh, 400 cases, five deaths, but the amount of 160 million dollars right away in the phase one and the phase two to artists. Um, if I remember right, uh, the National Endowment for the Arts in the U.S. the budget, which has been growing larger, even to just 146 million. So the oh. National Endowment of the Arts of America for all the arts painting, uh, poetry, filmmaking, theater, sculpture, and so on, and uh, is uh, under the amount of uh, uh, the relief fund that has been rolled out without, within four or five 
and, and weeks. This is absolutely stunning compared also to what we heard from our friends uh, in uh, in Egypt, um, uh, in Lebanon, uh, and I think Sahar Asaf from the American University in Beirut, where she works, said there's also, uh, I don't know if you can call it an idea to help artists. The idea is uh, you can apply for a $20 uh, support, and there's one landline you have to call by phone. Everybody can just access one landline. You have to wait for hours online and then fill wow. out a large complex form. Uh, basically, it's not existing. Um, and um, so this is uh, quite, um, quite, quite stunning. Um, the um, your performing arts network um, um, mm -hmm. already gives money. So the money, what you will give to the artists in a fast and bureaucratic way, is additional money, right? It's not part of the existing budget. No, no, it's it's additional. Yes, you're correct. So, um, uh, Wu Kang, what would you have to do to get that money? What did, did you apply for it, and what did you yes. have to do? So, what did you uh, do? Tell us. Tell us. I don't. I, uh, we're still writing the proposal. It has three different stages, and uh, the main idea is: if this situation continue, what can we create? As in, yeah. Yeah. maker. As a maker, you have a need inside to make something, or to mm -hmm. gather people to make something. So. We, we only set up a rules. So I have my uh, uh, lighting designer I work with and the stage designer I work with and the video artist I work with and the musician I work with and stage design, uh, stage manager. So we try to stay at home and okay. try to make something. I have to add to what Ukan just said oh. uh, for the first phase of the, of the relief fund. Okay, so half of that is for operations. Um, for mm. any um, burdens on operations or lost on production costs and that. But half of it is actually channeled into encouraging um, artists and arts groups to come up with initiatives that they could, um, they could actually experiment with or explore with, with digital content or actually with um, training um, because you can use this time for additional staff training. So. There's more to um, the entire relief fund is not only to, to, to pitch in on what's lost, but actually help and encourage what may be in the future. Whereas in, um, I, I believe all of us in the art sector in Taiwan have been somewhat um, not so prepared in the digital world coming up with digital content because we've always lacked funding and investment in that field. But this is actually a, a good, I would say this is a very bad time, but it's also provided us with time to think about the future and to think about things and options that we've never had time or funds to think about. And, um, and definitely to explore the digital world and how our, what we did in the past can actually branch out to um, reach more people in this turn in this time and also in the future as well. And part of the relief fund is actually contributing to that development as well. Mm -hmm. So the idea to find a new form um, of theater, we were last week also asking, you know, will there be on big theaters? Will there be ballet, uh, opera, drama? Will there also be a digital section? <clears throat> the response from many like Ostermeyer says, no, we do theater. Um, we don't uh, do that. That's not our field. There are museums, others who do it. But who knows um, that perhaps for these, uh, as I call it, the children of the digital age, Brecht used to say his theater is for the children of the technological age. But now we are in the digital age and the children who have grown up like you guys um, have a different um, approach. So um, Tong Yang, you have been thinking ahead even before the, uh, the crisis. Now you're getting money to find a new form, to do something new. Um, what's on your mind? What, what are you going to do? What are you thinking about? What have you seen that works? Um, I think just like Kathy said that we are finding a new possibility and then uh, the whole world has been um, knowing and really uh, knowing that the big map venues are releasing free online video to see performance mm -hmm. as a... Mm -hmm you know, as a solution for now. And then I think for a tra traditional theater goer like me, I will always think that's a backup option, 
like I'll never want to watch a theater performance from video. But then we, we actually realize it's actually quite good. Like we, we know anti life for a long time and then sometimes we, 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 we go because we, we didn't go to London. But uh, I think just two, few, uh, three days ago, that last weekend, a Taiwanese company did a live broadcasting of their show. And then everybody in our Facebook bubble is talking about it and people really do enjoy it. And then so Wukan and I and Kathy, we, we did a pre-chat before this. And then they are saying, thinking this really can be a, can be a model of uh, how we, um, uh, how we make the experience uh, wider, how we make uh, people who is not in the city, city experience uh, theater. But uh, how is that I different have... from existing uh, recordings that we already have? You know, let's say the National Theater in London broadcast, New York uh, City Opera broadcast. What, that already is there. What, what is the difference? What's new? I, I, I think there's nothing new. There, it's just that we rarely do it. We only think that the big theater or with big founding on that, like National Theater in London can do that. And they have uh, like a camera or 11 camera with uh, very professional uh, grips that can, 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 can do that. But then we realized with quite basic thing that, and then the online feedback is uh, not as bad. So all the theater, none of the theater company would uh, spend a, but a, a part of their budget on this in our previous uh, production, even though we know this technology knowledge for, for a long time and live stream is not hard and not even that expensive, but we wouldn't do that. We think it's a compromise for, for theater experience. Mm -hmm. But now we, we have a, what's new is that we experiencing and we have to experience it and then we, we can prepare it and then we can make it better. But on the other side, what I have been uh, talking in a smaller group um, with some younger artists that what if we are making a theater work that everybody's staying home using their screen? How can that be a theater experience? And then we are only at the very beginning. We have a few topics that we, we want to achieve. First of all, we need to use the nature of the internet like big data. So we can use big data to search for our audience. So we can put a very different audience together in the group. And so instead of like uh, broadcasting to the whole world for free or, you know, to uh, make or actually to broadcast and then kind of find a mechanism of uh, buying tickets online, that kind of thing. We are more thinking about uh, make a different online um, experience that is, uh, that use uh, the, the nature of internet. Other than that, it would be like, how do we co how do we share this moment together? How can we feel that we are in this moment together? Yeah, that will also be the other challenge. And then there are other points that we have been starting to draft. And then, yeah, hopefully maybe next year or uh, at some point we will do some better try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 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 uh, Wukang, um, do you have ideas? Or you, your choreographer or your dancers, their bodies embodied on the stage. That's what makes theater theater. Like people in a room, you watch them, your bodies we see. So now they are no longer there, they're screens. So uh, do you have an idea? Are you applying with an idea to yeah. the Taiwanese fund? What's your idea? Uh, just stay home. So we trying to make work. Uh, yeah. Artists stay home and isolated and the uh, audience stay home. So everybody stay at home with your screen to participate. So how As is a, that going to look like? What are you going to see when you participate? I don't know. I'm an audience I'll, member. I'll be the, uh, the first try will be the end of this month. Oh. We will do a online uh, live stream. And we'll, we'll so, do the- So dancers will be, of your company will be in their apartments? Yeah. You will no, be as I'll the be director the your... I, I'll be the only dancer. You'll and be the, the only uh, dancer. So you're going to be in your living room now where you are? Uh, I'll be in my studio so I yeah. can move around bigger because in my living room, my daughter and my wife are running around. So uh -huh. I have to stay in studio. So you're going to be dressed up in a dance yeah. outfit or, you, and yeah. what's your, <clears throat> what's your idea? What are you going to do now a little mm -hmm. bit, what you will be doing, what movement or music? What will... I, I don't know because throughout the, uh, 
we we've been rehearsing for a few weeks, and uh, every rehearsal was was a, a lot of discovery of technology on internet, like how people use internet, how people use YouTube, and how to yeah, how to use the chat room on the side, how to how you use the material chat room on the side and input into the the video and all that stuff. You just try. It's a, another totally another theater. You just need to find a new way, and we were looking for it. And this morning was uh, for you was last yesterday. Yesterday it was it was big uh, pink full moon. There was an opera, six hours opera. Mm -hmm. Did anybody see it? No. Okay, live stream. So there were two hundred and fifty people in Zoom. They did an opera. It was quite uh, interesting. So you had 250 Zoom windows on your screen? Uh, yeah, in, uh, in, in YouTube, they, they did live stream opera on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So you can see the little screen and two naked body. I'm not sure what they were going to do. It feels like they are about to fuck. And on the other screen, there was one lady start to tell a story. And so the, 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 it, because the, it's voice activated. So the screen jumped to the center. You listen to the story. And mm -hmm. when she finished the story and it goes back to all the windows. And so you do little things. So it's just rediscovering new tools, new stage. I think and the chat room is going on on the right side. People will be able, <clears throat> audience members chat and communicate. Uh, I think that <clears throat> one was only the performer. Mm -hmm. The, the one I saw this today uh, from America, the Pink Full Moon Opera. And the one I did will be, I hopefully they will chat. I don't know if they want to chat or they will, I don't know if anybody would chat or participate, but hopefully I, at the end of this month, our first live stream performers will have some audience <laughs> to experiment. Mm -hmm. And since it's a new stage for us, it's like site-specific performers and internet's the site. And we start to explore how music, mm -hmm. how video, how light designer can use this technology. Mm -hmm. Gives a whole new meaning to site-specific. It will be yeah. on the internet um, um, site. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Tang Yuan, um, I know yeah. <clears throat> it's also in Taiwan as in the rest of the world, Digital David dating services like Tinder and others also now encourage you know no longer just for hookups or other say go out and 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 meet people. Is that something you observe or is it something you participate in or your your yeah. work in, involved in that? Yeah, uh, apart from working in theater, I also make documentary and then I brought the, this documentary looking for question mm -hmm. mark uh, to New York in 2017 and 2018 uh, to the New Fest. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, it's been uh, it's a documentary that uh, interview uh, gay queer society that use uh, online dating apps, and then I found that it's so amazing that this app how how can these apps function now, and they need really need to send out message. There will be pop up windows to say stay at home or if you need to be with someone, what 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 else can you do? So there are all these healthcare and mental care uh, advice on these apps. Uh, and this really uh, goes back to how, how, how much we're longing for being connected to, to, to people. We have never seen so many people posting the, uh, their Zoom meeting, their Skype meeting, mm -hmm. their Skype drinking parties, Skype karaoke uh, ever before. And then it's quite amazing how positive we, how positively we try, how hard that we try to be so positive uh, especially during these these few uh, seagull talk, that all artists have been quite, you know, stay home, cook, and reset. Use this time to relax, mm -hmm. and yeah. So, so actually, what what I'm working next week in National Theater uh, in Taichung will be actually uh, doing a VR work. So yeah. uh, I guess it's somehow connected to. Uh, alone but connected experience that you are alone with your goggle. And it's a, it's kind of a dying, not so successful. It's, it was once a rising star kind of, uh, everybody's looking upon on VR, 
but nobody really, really want to put it on at home for another hours after whole day with your mobile phone. But uh, I'm gonna film something to uh, to to start with, and uh, just a little bit of feedback for the body movement and dance uh, using internet. I, I realized I can probably share the working progress that I did in the Netherlands. I don't know how good this will look, but I will share my desktop. If it doesn't work, it will be two mi one minutes or two. So yeah, um, shortly, yeah. Yeah. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So we were in uh, Groningen and then we actually call uh, someone in Taipei, the, the other dancer in Taipei, and then we actually have then had a duet uh, on, the, on the fifth stage together. And then we also call someone in Paris while the, they are also in a the theater. So, so you are, you're like, you see oh. another theater on the stage with uh, just a ghost. It's really not even a trick. But uh, for this one, we kind of uh, key out the dancer in Taipei's background. This has mm -hmm. been, this is nothing too new. I think people in the 70s also use satellites to combine um, dancers from the East Coast to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. But then we are also asking the dancer's mom that, so, so she also called his mom, her mom, and then the mom also uh, go to the family mart, the convenience shop, in Taipei, like how do we bring the other time and movement and color and, and, and video on in theater? So that's um, just, I thought while, while you talk about that, I, I thought I can probably share yeah. mm -hmm. this. No, that really is an example of, uh, of, of work like you and many others are trying to find how to use the digital worlds, the screen, also the additional space of that, uh, black box mm. uh, where we're in or there's Italian stage uh, uh, theaters. Um, I think it is a good question, uh, VR, um, uh, if it's the time for VR now. I mean, projections from uh, Facebook that owns, uh, you know, the, the big ones are, are um, that there will be millions and millions of users. Um, that we once had Tia Warsowa from Poland as guest at the Siegel Film Festival. And they showed us a project when they filmed an existing show but used VR as a tool almost as a democratic tool you were sitting on different places where watching the show sometimes you were even in the middle and you could uh, see that intentionally kind of bad quality uh, so they said we want to see we want to make sure that people think it's not reality like the seams of cuts were visible I thought it was a convincing thing also a full length of a show so um, VR and 360 for sure um, might be something that the new uh, uh, new technologies will produce. Kathy, are you seeing, what are you seeing? I'm, I, I guess you are the one that looks at uh, the projects like uh, uh, Vukang and Tuyang are putting in. What are you seeing? Mm. What, what, are, what projects are people uh, uh, proposing with this incredibly mm. generous, to hire, right. highly admirable plan of the government to like, really take care of the artists? What do you see? What's coming out? Um. Well, I have to see mm -hmm. what Dong Yan just showed us uh, was super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've seen that work, Dong Yan, uh, or m we maybe I have. Showed, we show different parts every time we did our every presentation. Time. Okay, we, we okay. Kind of, All right. But do so you look I, at, uh, Kathy, do you look at applications right now? Do you read them? Um, no, um, because it's still in the first round. Yeah. So it, applications are still coming in, but they're, they go directly to the ministry. So the ministry is, um, is uh, rounding up a panel of, um, of jurors to, to look over the applicants and um, the applications, but um, we don't know how many yet. Uh, but what we do is we, we, we advise uh, the groups and freelancers on how to make applications um, because a lot of the freelancers, especially the tech people, uh, don't really understand the administrative side of things. Um, so no, we don't really uh, see the works yet uh, unless I believe we will see more as the application deadline um, closes. But what Ukan said was super interesting. I'm really interested to see what you're gonna do. Like I if know. I tune in, if I tune in, do I give you instructions or do I just participate by chatting? 
or do you do you even see or or do you even actually um, interact with I whoever really, someone well, really, or do yeah. we participate as spectators? I think both. You, you, there will be definitely time for you to be a traditional theater spectator, and uh, at time you will be participant. And mm -hmm. uh, if you went crazy, you wanted to dance, you start dancing. Yeah, the first time <laughs> I will have a duet with Wu Kang virtually. And <laughs> if you dance in Zoom, you can be naked. You don't get fine, and there's no censorship. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm hmm that's true it is true that is a even, different world even in controlled. national theater in taipei you you will not be fine <laughs> well but if you're an audience people will bother you all right all right mm. if you're uh, audience maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay so this site <laughs> right. has a lot of to discover <laughs> mm. all right sorry frank to come back right. to your question yeah. um i i do have like uh the, the artists and um, groups in the field um, talking about the, the different kind of um, um, campaigns or initiatives or creations that can be brought into you know, the, the coming weeks. Um, but I think a lot is still exploring um, technology, um, the tools that we have. There are a lot of crazy ideas, but still exploring if it's possible with present day technology. Um, but also there are talks about using the online live streaming, but actually packing it up to be, you know, a seeming retro of, um, you know, the 70s and 80s where everybody tuned in to the TV. Um, so there are a lot of different formats that people are talking about, but because uh, in the past we haven't been so acquainted ourselves with, um, with the technological tools. So there's a lot of uncertainty in that field, but definitely trying to, um, I think what Dong Yen and um, Wu Kang are doing is actually incorporating that into the next production or the next um, creation. But right now, what everybody is mostly talking about is how to um, use the present um, content, but actually transferring that to another format. Or actually, how can how can it be broken up into different sections? I guess mm -hmm. to go back on that uh, experiment of Tia Varsova, they are part of a, a, a production company in Warsaw um, that actually has a small VR movie theaters. That just means there are six or seven, eight chairs in a maybe in the library or in movie theaters in the lobby, and they produce small clips, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, you pay a couple of euros or dollars to, to see it produced for it. And uh, the producer and the artistic director of the project said he loves theater artists. They're the only one who understand time and space. Um, often um, um, IT people or uh, software engineers or developers uh, don't understand the concept and what theater artists is better bread and butter that you are in a time and in a space and also in a scene, in a location, a site that is specific. Um, and, um, and so they uh, think that this uh, will be a way, at least as an additional way to engage with the robots, things produced for a VR and uh, the headsets mm -hmm. are getting cheaper. Also uh, cameras uh, uh, that will uh, take a, a full view 360 and the prices are dropping. And um, I think that's one of my predictions that perhaps the uh, uh, theater artists and choreographers and will discover this and create content that is not just the filming or representation of something mm. where you wish you would be there like you know you look at a slide of a rembrandt yes you see what the painting is about but you don't see uh, the painting you don't see john jambolain sculpture really uh, until you go around it and um so we will see what these artists come up dome projections uh, and and new new ways uh, of incorporating um, these things and perhaps uh, this uh, crisis and funding from Taiwan, you know, will um, create a, a virtual realities, a VR experiences by artists that can be shared um, around the world and others will, will respond to it, not to replace uh, the life. It cannot, every artist we talk to said will never be, this is also not the game, <clears throat> not the idea, but it is to find an additional form, um, a new form. Um, as Louis Fuller, the dancer um, who, uh, did almost classical dance, uh, but she invented in 1880 or 90. She helped 30 or 40 patterns 
for lights. You know, she was the one who said, let's put colored lights in front of that newly electric lights. And um, mm -hmm. Paris was taken by it. Rancière talks about that and where he does say that uh, when a traditional art form mixes with new technology, this is when breaks happen. Writing changed when the typewriter came. Kittler, the great German um, uh, literary professor, said that the typewriter, the phonograph, the computer, these were all interruptions, serious interruptions, mm -hmm. and then adaptations of, of what came up. So we are now, I think, in this time, we really do not know yet. Maybe it has already happened, but um, it's fantastic. And I think maybe one day we do an evening at the Siegel to see what were works produced by Taiwanese artists uh, coming out of phase one or phase two. Um, and it's an experiment that's important, I think also for the world. Um, as I said earlier, other countries have no means to really do it. And I think I mixed up, it wasn't Lebanon, I think it was Egypt, the, the, the one phone line, you have to try to call mm -hmm. in for your $20 support. Um, so it is quite, uh, it sounds uh, to all of us like a, almost like a fairyland uh, and uh, wonderland that this is really thinkable with that even low amount of, of infected people and that's that you take such good care of the artists who represent i think also a spirit um, of a country we heard these desperate calls in a way from the fres from italy and um, also in germany france where things are very very complicated so um it is just stunning um how it is Tokshiki uh, okada also said at the time when he talked the government he does not trust the government they will not tell what it is like fukushima and people could go out, they said, maybe stay at home in the evenings on the weekend. But I think just yesterday also Japan changed um, the level of emergency. And so things are happening um, um, as we speak. So um, to come back to um, um, one of the questions we often also get, um, the healthcare worker, the worker, the bus driver, uh, the people who stack the shelves, um, who were not perhaps always on the mind of politicians, but perhaps also not on the mind of performing artists as audiences. Um, are you guys thinking about them? Is there something coming out new? I know um, Fe, um, Han Chen and Fang from China said the Chinese government kind of ordered a custom tailored opera about uh, healthcare workers in a hospital and there should be an opera come on. So kind of a government um, um, <clears throat> initiative, which for sure will also tell patriotic stories. So, um, mm. but still uh, the idea, of, is this on the mind of Taiwanese artists or, or the mm. government? It's after all these are taxes from the people who pay them. Is there something where you feel uh, we have to connect to these people? Yeah. To these um, part of I, our I, society that, yeah. Yeah. Um... I could uh, contribute a little bit um, but that. I think um, from our experience in SARS, um, one of the companies that I, I work closely with, uh, Cloudgate Dance Theater, um, during the SARS period after that, uh, they did do shows that invited the healthcare workers to the theaters um, and um, for just to to say thank you, and I believe that uh, Cloudgate is also talking about that for for the for the autumn shows as well, um, how to make specific shows or um, to make specific um, um, ceremonies or celebrations for these caretakers that has been devoting themselves to to the entire society, and I I've heard a lot of artists have been thinking about this as well because they are actually our support system that made this um, possible to keep, the, um, to keep the rates so low, but also to keep everybody um, like really taken good care of. Um, that's what I've been hearing, um, projecting for maybe autumn from, from September to October. That's, that's what we're projecting in, in Taiwan. We're still very optimistic about things, you know, back up running and operating in the autumn. Do you have um, projections when theaters or when it will come back? I mean, this morning, Olivier P uh, gave a press conference in Paris about the um, Avignon Festival. Mm -hmm. um, he presented the dream, uh, what they worked on, uh, what mm -hmm. they have been prepared for a year um, about it. It's clear that it might not happen at the day, but of course also, Canceling a festival means uh, no income for artists and also for mm. the people working on it. Um, they are waiting for the situation. Um, maybe it will be postponed. Uh, it would be a hard loss uh, not to have it on the year. So how, how are projections in uh, Taipei? Uh, mm. is, 
do you feel uh, very confident of the given the low numbers like by the summer things will be back to normal i would say we're trying to keep very optimistic views um mostly the shows are canceled until um end of june july um there are some canceled uh in august but i think generally after august people are still hoping that um the the spread would die down and everything would come become normal or calmer it's all very it's all very calm right now relatively com in comparison to the world but because we're all interconnected so we're also very cautious but definitely we're i think everybody is still hoping that everything is back up running by september yeah yeah i know also yeah. an australian musician i think who came with an orchestra yeah uh, was infected with the virus yeah. and imported yeah. in and of course it opens yeah. um so so um so many uh yeah, many questions so and um, a question to uh wu kang and to yang also kathy what are you reading at the moment that we ask everybody what are you listening to is there something you are discovering uh, something you are focusing on which you haven't done before or an activity what are you what are you doing <laughs> to, for your mind Okay. Not to do the same and uh <laughs> since i spend more time at home mm -hmm. so i play with my daughter more who we saw in between yeah beautiful yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> coming in yes and so it was really nice it was really nice mm -hmm. and so she fell she she's more accustomed to me staying home this much like this uh this evening i went out to do the performance mm -hmm. she was very angry because mm -hmm. i i left her for so long two hours mm -hmm. three hours yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but it was really good spend more time with family and uh, yeah i can't for some reason i cannot read during this mm -hmm. time and yeah. uh i cannot really watch a performance online even though mm -hmm. there are so many mm -hmm. i was just i was not able to come down and stay and look at the screen to see a performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And That's so true. That's true. it's really strange that there are so many things, there are so many yeah. things I wanted to see because yeah, but now I just can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been, I, I agree with Wukong, I can't really just sit and watch uh, a theater show on, on the screen. Um, well, A, because I don't have that much time to watch an NT Life um, performance <laughs> that goes for three hours in the middle of the night. Uh, but I think theater in itself, it needs um, attention, like committed attention. And, um, you know, when you're in your home environment, that's just impossible. So I've actually been reading more um, and also having cigarettes in my ears all the time is helping with that, all that music. What I've been reading um, recently was um, all the names they used for God. Um, I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. It's incredible. Um, okay. Yeah. It's very um, fantasy-like. I think it's just mm -hmm. uh, having time to read different things and just to feel imagination is what works for me right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What are you? I, I have been watching a lot of VR films. Like I dive it, into it. And then I also discover a VR reality um, chat room that you are in your avatar. And then I chat with uh, people in New York. And um, so I kind of spent quite a lot of time doing that and also prepare for the VR filming next week. So originally I sort of tell everybody that I'm gonna do a tryout but now we are building a set that cost a little piece of set that cost uh, like um, 4,000 US dollar, which is mm -hmm. quite a lot for a tryout. So, yeah, yeah, so, that's um, true. so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, actually working quite even more than before, but also mm -hmm. because I have like 14 days of kind of alone and being in front of computer. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I, I listen to the seagull talks. Oh, that's great! Yes. Yeah, that's a big. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I want to talk, tell the uh, Lebanese and uh, Egyptian uh, artists that uh, listening to their talks really is empowering. 
like it's so difficult for them, but they are so confident and beautiful and then doing the best of what they, they are doing. And they also really uh, comfort me by, in the end, you ask them what, what, what they want to say to the artists around the world, what they want to say. And they actually say that no stress on producing things. And mm -hmm. I think we have this tendency or this nature of like feeling that if we are not producing work, we are useless or whatever. But I think listening to their um, talk uh, truly is a blessing in the bedtime. I mean, it's one o'clock in tai Taiwan. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but thank you. No, that's, that's of course also very, very meaningful for us. I mean, yesterday has Lucia Calamari, yeah. the Italian playwright. She said she goes to her apartment and moves things. She's like, mm. she, she's called uh, uh, Signora Clip Clap because uh, she should hear her shoes and she moves and moves things. If for two hours, she can kind of focus on something. She can't hear the songs anymore. People open their windows and sing around uh, six or seven o'clock. But she said, at the beginning it was good, but now it's almost like terrorizing her mind. And uh, so then she also feels you know, nothing one can do. But as a form, as a closing question, maybe to both of you, what do you uh, from Taiwan, which is not <clears throat> as existential, uh, uh, a situation at the moment and with support and also perhaps with the um, responsibility to find new forms. But what is your, your advice to artists listening now around the world? What would you think is uh, significant to keep in mind? I would say it's okay to be negative. Try to be negative for a few hours. It's okay. Don't try to be stay positive, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. stay positive, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think just follow, follow the flow, because I think for the first time in maybe a thousand years that humans are connected finally through this virus, because we mm -hmm. all shared almost the same experience. Mm -hmm. So maybe when this, is, when this pandemic is over, maybe a few years later, and you see different uh, friends or people from different country, we can all share the same experience. Mm -hmm. so, so this invisible positive. virus that we can see in a way connects us. We ourselves are viruses. Uh, part of our DNA is virus-based. It is a virus, uh, RNA, the shadow DNA. So we are actually also in a way a virus is the oldest living, one of the oldest living forms <laughs> yes. in thousands of years. So it is uh, opens incredible uh, questions. So thank you so much for giving us that um, in a way encouraging update and also stunning update uh, how um, uh, that, that the Taiwanese uh, government supports it, how the um, Arts and uh, Performing Arts Network Development Association uh, performs, performs in a way uh, that role of really supporting that. I have never heard anything like that in our talks here. I haven't read about it, so you heard it in a way first here on the Siegel Talks. By the way, the Siegel Theater is the only institution in New York City producing new content every day. We are the our mm -hmm. center is the only one at the moment up. And it's a big honor to have you um, with us. So um, come back. I know both of you, the artists have been in New York, Kathy, I'm sure also many times. Um, we know um, the um, um, Taipei um, also um, cultural center where we have uh, uh, collaborated with. We also would like to thank uh, Chi Ping and, you know, who helped us. Also, we presented one of the first um, queer gay lesbian readings uh, in New York City from Taiwanese artists with the support of the government the very first time I think the government of Asian countries have given their approval and their stamp and the logo was a significant event. So uh, the news from Taiwan are just uh, stunning and it's a great sign for that country and uh, that society and some things we should look up to and also perhaps uh, learn from. So um, all stay safe um, and I hope it will also stay the way how it is for you and um, this big experiment uh, of uh, giving money to say, find new forms with that mission so see it also perhaps as a global uh, uh, auftrag, mission, as a Heiner Motto would say, to so find something and uh, report to us uh, what you found and what you learned during the journey. Actually, that is what theater also is about, that directors and actors go on a journey and then they share what they found. So thank you um, um, for coming yeah. tomorrow. I hope you will uh, have time to tune in the great, great <coughs> Meredith Monk, uh, one of yes. our Yes, Rocks, for sure. You know, of the world's uh, uh, music and performance, a shaman who really communicates with the world uh, will be with us. And, uh, and then we hear from Burkina Faso, from Aristide, who is a great director, writer, who runs one of the most significant 
theater festivals in Africa. Um, he will be um, with us with also an actress and they will tell us what's going on there. So I can't wait to hear the update again. Thank you really for taking the time. Uh, it's now uh, one o'clock in the, mm -hmm. yeah. two o'clock, one o'clock in the <laughs> yeah. yeah, And yeah, yeah. And so uh, thank you again. And uh, please do keep on listening to us. And it was very mm -hmm. moving to hear from us uh, that the Siegel talks have been <clears throat> um, mm. in, in a way meaningful to you and I will make sure that our friends in Egypt and Lebanon hear about it. Good, good luck. Stay yes. safe and stay soon. Stay, 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 stay safe. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Frank. Bye-bye.